Hello and welcome once again everyone. Today's video features a brand new line of Swedish destroyers, starting off with Tier 5 Visby. As usual I've included the full ship build including captain skills after the main highlights with the timestamp here on screen. The Swedish or pan-European line has been in early access from the Tier 5 Visby up to the Tier 9 Oosterjutland for the last few weeks and are to be released fully into the game with the 0.9.3 update. This map is called Estuary and its domination mode and as you can see from the attack aircraft already in the skies above us there are two carriers in this game on the enemy team. Playing destroyers with this many enemy aircraft in the skies above is going to present significant difficulties for any destroyer captain, but especially for lower tier destroyers that have no smoke screens. The friendly Xi'an Wei has seen the threat and is booking it out of here. I can't say I blame him. To avoid any confusion during the video, these are Swedish destroyers, but fall under the pan-European line in World of Warships, which does include other destroyers like the Polish Bliskawice and the Dutch Friesland. The playstyle is reminiscent of the French destroyer line, but with some subtle differences. My friendly Nuremberg has become the focus of both carriers, so I'm repositioning to help him as much as possible with my AA, but it's only prolonging the inevitable. The Swedish line, without giving too much away for later tiers, have in general very good anti-aircraft defences. But in a game with double CVs like this, that is really going to be put to the test. Visby, at first glance, has one of the lowest health pools at tier 5, with just over 11,000 hit points, which does include survivability expert. But unlike other low tier destroyers, Visby gets a repair party, which with careful management can greatly increase Visby's survivability. When using premium consumables and superintendent, one gets a max of four repair parties in total. For the sake of clarity, I only have a 10 point captain in this video. I don't have superintendent yet, so there's only three showing in this case. There is some very good news on the consumables, by the way. Wargaming just announced that non-premium consumables will be removed and the premium versions will become free of charge. This is great news for new players, who struggle to amass credits to buy modules, new ships, etc. So well done on this change. Not only that, but it levels the playing field as a lot of players were reluctant to use them due to the additional credit cost. Having been forced to adopt a very defensive posture, I had hoped to get a cap reset on that destroyer. And having underestimated my speed, I've been forced to dramatically slow up to be able to make this turn. Visby is deceptively fast for a tier 5 destroyer. When you mount the Sierra Mike signal flag and activate the speed boost consumable, Visby can reach 44 knots in straight line speed, which gives one the capability of rapidly carrying out fast attacks and redeploying rapidly across the battlefield. This speed is ideal for hit and run engagements and will become an integral part of your tactics when playing the Visby. I'm just using these islands to get some shots off from concealment, while maintaining my position close to my battleships. Any attempt to venture forward on my own would be simply foolhardy, with two enemy destroyers in front and these two carriers constantly spotting this whole area. This Aoba might be attempting to suicide torp rush my battleship, so I'm just going to drop some area of denial torps in front. My battleship has stopped, so there is no risk of torping friendlies, something one always has to be aware of whenever torping from behind friendlies, which generally should be avoided. Visby's main battery feels quite strong, with five 120mm guns in a 2-1-2 turret layout, with a firing range of 9.5 kilometers and a base reload speed of 7.5 seconds. This can be further reduced to 6.7 seconds with basic firing training. 
which I don't have in this game, but I'll elaborate further on this in the build section. What stands out about these guns is the shell velocity of 900 meters per second for both HE and AP rounds. I've managed to finally spot both of these destroyers at once, and my ploy here is to bait them into chasing me. Having 60% of my gun power at the rear allows me to bring more DPM on an advancing target, while maintaining narrow angles while the advancing opponents are forced to show a lot more broadside if they wish to trade evenly. This allows me to dictate the engagement on my terms. One has already lost interest and peeled away, leaving the remaining Fisbee at my mercy. With these high shell speeds, I'm able to comfortably land shells with regularity. He has turned away. Slow my speed. He does take a strike from the carrier. One shell hit is all it'll take. And the enemy Visby goes down. So we've managed to remove one of those enemy destroyers. For the loss of minimal damage. Pop my repair party. Start pushing forward. See if I can engage this second destroyer. He is spotted. He would seem to be reapproaching my position. New York is advancing. Try and quickly close the distance here and get in torpedo range. It's an ideal target that's advancing like this. And the torpedoes on the Visby are quite usable. Visby gets two X3 launchers which are centrally mounted so can be used on either side, with 8 kilometers in range and a torpedo speed of 68 knots when using the torpedo tubes modification mod 1, with a very fast reload time of only 55 seconds. You can basically put 6 torps in the water every minute, which can be a lot of fun when the conditions are right and faced with an advancing force. I kind of expected that New York to slow down instead of full on charging but he seems keen to fight. The only downside with these torpedoes is the actual amount of damage they inflict. It's quite low with a max damage of just 6200 but balanced out by a very fast reload. You will need to land complete full salvos to devastate targets. So be prepared to rely on chip damage a lot trying to inflict floods and fires to maintain pressure on targets instead of outright deletions. I have set him on fire. I could drop narrow spreads here on his bow. He's taken a torpedo from the carrier, but I have been firing so I am detected. I do expect him to be maneuvering in some shape or form. He has turned a little to the right. Get another fire. There are more aircraft coming in. Activate my AA defense sector, and that New York goes down to the two fires I had burning. Another wave of Ryuho torpedo planes coming in. It's been a constant onslaught on this side of the map, as both carriers on the enemy team have been hammering my teammates on this side of the map, with virtually every attack since the start of the game. I've been doing literally my best to provide AA support, whenever possible, and we have managed to hold the line, despite all the odds on this flank. Without the threat of air attack on the decap, our team on the far side seems to be seizing the initiative. We are still down in points and caps, but we do have a two ship advantage. One of Visby's great strengths is its very low detection range from the air, which is only 2.2 kilometers. And by constantly switching off your AA, and moving around utilizing the AA bubbles of friendly ships, you can become quite a difficult target to track down. The enemy carriers have left me alone so far while concentrating on our battleships, and I must say at this point our Duke of York has done a very good job just surviving so long because the attacks really have been relentless so far. It's time to take advantage of the enemy carriers inexperience and push forward and attempt to capture this point. More experienced carrier players would have already singled out a destroyer with their undivided attention. I already mentioned the Visby's very low detection range from the air, 
Her sea base detection range with a full stealth build is 6 kilometers, which is pretty standard for a tier 5 destroyer. However, when you combine Visby's very good torpedo range of 8 kilometers, it gives Visby a very nice window of 2 kilometers where one can torp enemy targets from the safety of concealment. Not a luxury afforded to many destroyers at this tier, I assure you. It's very interesting to gauge the strength of a ship when it's really put in difficult circumstances, as compared to a game with no carriers and an enemy team that just simply YOLOs forward, allowing you to land torps at your leisure. And you will get plenty of torp hits in the Visby. I've had games with 15 to 20 torp hits, but I just felt they were very uninteresting to watch and not in the least bit exciting. Just going to activate my speed boost and fast forward until I spot the carrier. There is the first carrier. While I consider taking on one carrier in the Visby more than doable, taking on two is a whole other matter. Once they become wise to the threat, they will undoubtedly focus on me immediately. The plan is to hopefully land some torps from stealth and maybe take out one quickly before he can react and inflict too much damage on me in return. I'm dropping both spreads on his predicted path as I do expect that CV to keep sailing straight. He has to if he wants to get past that island. The Duke of York has opened fire and that carrier has started to turn so those tarps will be a bust I'm afraid. I've been playing defensive from basically the start of this game, so it's time to start getting aggressive and rush these guys down. We have the cap and ship lead, and if I go down it will be in glorious combat, and hopefully I can take one or two of these carriers with me. I am detected now, so I'm just going to start opening up. He is angled bow in for the moment. My torpedoes are almost off cooldown. It starts to turn away. Here comes the first wave of rocket planes. Turn in sharply. Did manage to avoid that strike. I have switched to armor piercing. Double citadel. There's another citadel. He has turned away. Drop two spreads of torps again. This is where it's going to get a bit crazy. Both sets of planes coming at me now. Set that first carrier on fire. Get a torp hit. No flood. Switch back to armor piercing. Citadel again. Takes out that first carrier. There's six citadels on that carrier. The second one is still showing broadside. That second carrier manages to get a chunky hit with his rocket planes. There are three citadels, four citadels. Should be able to get torps off. That's another seven citadels. Do manage to get those torps away. Another double citadel. This is going to be close. Here come these rockets. And alas, we go down. And I can't believe it. Those tarps have missed as well. We did win this game, in the end getting almost 80k damage. Before going to the complete ship build, I've added some links, including the Help Me Discord and my own personal Discord in the description below. Now on to the build. Starting off with the consumables, I always recommend using premium charges which will decrease the cooldown times of your damage control and also add extra charges of engine boost and repair parity. Bisbee gets three ship upgrade slots, starting off with main armaments mod 1, engine room protection and torpedo tubes mod 1. Onto the captain skills, as you can see I've just a very basic captain so far, with just 10 points allocated. Starting with Preventive Maintenance, Last Stand, Survivability Expert 
and then Concealment Expert. The basics for any destroyer captain. The remaining 9 points does offer quite a few alternatives, many of which can benefit the Bisbee greatly, but I'm leaning towards going for Priority Target, Adrenaline Rush, Basic Firing Training and Superintendent for those extra charges of Repair and Speed Boost. So let's take a look at what this build means for the ship's final stats. For survivability, Visby gets 11,350 hit points, which is further enhanced by three repair parties, being four with Superintendent. Main artillery consists of five 120mm guns, one single and two dual turrets, with 9.5km in range, with a reload speed of 7.5 seconds, reduced down to 6.7 seconds with basic firing training. Visby gets two X3 torpedo launchers, both centrally mounted for use on either side, with 8 kilometers in range, a torp speed of 68 knots, and a very fast reload time of 55 seconds. Visby gets an AA defense rating of 19, with a medium range defense of just 3.5 kilometers. For maneuverability, Visby gets a max base speed of 39 knots, a turning circle of 540 meters, and a rudder shift time of 2.5 seconds. Finally, Visby has a concealment rating of 96, meaning you will be surface detected at 6 kilometers and by aircraft at 2.4 kilometers. I'd like to thank you once again all for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more. Take a moment to check out some of my most recent videos and leave a comment below. And until the next time, keep sailing it like you stole it.